Okay, it's time for the Clake uh, One Light Clutch install. I'm gonna try and get this on today. I've heard that the bleeding procedure can be uh, quite the pain, so we're gonna see how this goes. Um, I'm not gonna film everything because uh, some of it's pretty basic as far as, you know, removing. I'm gonna remove the handguard. Um, I'm actually gonna remove this piece completely just to have room to work in here. Uh, then there's an install video on YouTube already by Clake talking about, you know, keeping it slightly above level, how to bleed it. Um, so I'll provide updates as I go, but really, unless I run into a major snag, I think it'll be a pretty short video. And then uh, going for a ride um, tomorrow for a significant, uh, you know, distance. So we'll see how it holds up because one of the things I've seen is uh, even a poor bleed on the Clake. Uh, it'll work initially, but then as it gets heated up and as you ride it more and use it more, um, if it's not bled properly, they can have a tendency to stick and not return um, all the way back out away from the handlebar. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, so first little snag, not a major one, but just a snag. Um, if you look, you can see this silver extension piece. So on all the pictures, clake one light clutch that right there is not on the pictures and so i've you know test fitted and done a few things here and what i realized is the clutch line the stock clutch line on the betas are pretty short um so much so that if you look at the stock master cylinder here you can see how long this neck comes out from the actual master cylinder Okay, so what it looks like to me is uh, whoever installed this, it was on a cross trainer before, they've added that little extender on here so that the cable can reach and it's not, it's not tugging um, too much. So I took it off, tried to install it. It didn't really work out. Um, so now I've tightened it and put it back on and I'm about to start the bleeding process here trying to keep this cable as elevated as possible, not pointed down. Uh, I don't want it to be losing any. Uh, or as little fluid as possible and I got a rag here just to soak up any of the dot four um, that could be falling out of there and you'll also notice as per the video it's just above slightly above um, level and that's what they want you to do I'm about to pop the cover off and add some fluid and start priming the uh, the master cylinder they do want it kind of tilted back above level another thing that is um, potentially going to be an issue although i'm hoping once i get the lever down because i like to angle my levers quite a bit more down than uh this current position is i use the emperor mount you'll notice that's touching and if you get a top view there's not a lot of clearance there i've read about guys using spacers and stuff my hope is that when it looks like my other handlebar which has my levers pointed kind of significantly down, um, almost to the point of dropping underneath the handguard a little bit. That's how I like them positioned. I'm hoping once I drop this one down on the handlebars that it'll be out of this way and I can, uh, I can put the handguard back on. Uh, plan B is to add washers to bring the handguard out um, and potentially use a longer bolt to secure it here so that it gives it a little bit more standoff from this whole contraption here. We'll see how it goes. All right, second snag. The clutch line on betas is too short. So to try it out, because I do want to try it out, and I don't want to spend $100 on, you know, a plus two inch cable, I've rerouted it. So it typically went from here up under the triple clamp and then back around the front and into the uh, master cylinder. Um, I've just disconnected the little bracket that was attached right here and I'm running it just up and over the handlebars, which seemingly has given me enough slack that I should be able to run this for a couple of rides and you know see if I like it but that's a huge pain um, and I've been bleeding this thing for now over an hour and it is still very bubbly so I'm gonna keep working it the lever feels good um, I mean there's definitely pressure there and, and it's working but um, there's still bubbles coming out and I've heard 
you know, numerous times, you really got to make sure that you have all the bubbles out um, or you can run into issues later on once it gets uh, heated up. So, I mean, I'm just going to continue bleeding it, um, you know, until my fingers fall off. But uh, until I see absolutely no indication of any bubbles whatsoever, um, and I'll check back once that's done. My helper has completely given up. I have now been bleeding this Clake one leg clutch for hours. Um, I mean, at least at least two and a half hours. Um, I've been bleeding this thing. And every time I think I have it, every time I think there's no more bubbles, I do it a couple more times, and lo and behold, there's bubbles. It's driving me crazy. Now, I don't have a lot of experience um, while bleeding anything, really. Um, you know, from the mountain bike world, a little bit but and i have heard that this can take quite a while but i mean this is uh this is next level here hopefully this is uh worth it all right so clake one leg clutch is on um i gotta tidy up a couple of things get this this is for my integrated signal lights on my uh, zeta handguards just gonna get that out of the way so that it's not being rubbed by the lever in any way shape or form but i have clearance which is good around my handguards like i said i run my handguards pretty low um i actually haven't found a fix for it that's i mean that's from mountain biking too it's the same way that's where i'm comfortable sitting and standing i just like to have them lower um so the the issue with that is that you know just barely sometimes they peak out and i mean that's pretty low i might adjust that up a little bit so it's maybe matches this one a little bit more but it felt good um so i think i still have clearance and i can move it up a little bit so that's good news um to be honest because i was worried about the handguards and if i really wanted to i actually could still put a washer in between uh these two pieces and it would bring that out another couple of millimeters and then i could probably adjust it up um and there would be absolutely zero chance of any contact whatsoever. So uh, I'll fiddle with it. I took it for a drive and I didn't film it. Um, feels good. Uh, I won't lie. Um, it's pretty cool. I, I have cranked on the adjusting knob right here a little tiny bit. Um, I'm still, I think there's still tons of adjustment there to make the clutch pull uh, feel even lighter. But I'm impressed. I don't know. It, uh, anyway, I got a big ride tomorrow. Well, big ride, long ride tomorrow. So we're going to see. It took forever to bleed. I'm hoping that, um, I'm hoping that it works, um, and it doesn't start sticking, which is something. And if I really, truly do like it and I'm going to keep it on the bike, uh, the next thing is a, uh, longer clutch cable. So two inches, I think two to three inches would be perfect in length. Um, and who knows, M maybe there's something I can do under the tank with routing, uh, if, you know, if I decide to keep it and I'm, and I'm going to keep it on the bike, but we'll see so far, um, happy it went on. The bleeding was a complete pain in the butt. There's a lot of brake fluid everywhere. Unfortunately, I might actually spray this down just to make sure I get it all off everywhere. Um, but I spent hours, hours and hours and hours. And finally, I just kind of said, you know what? The lever feels good. Um, it feels like there's lots of pressure. It doesn't feel like there's any play in it whatsoever. I mean, you know, you can't you can't move it. It's tight right away. Um, so to me, I think it's good. So anyway, again, we'll take it out for a ride tomorrow. And uh, we're going to see how it works. Stay tuned. Canadian Four Stroke Enduro Channel.